Hey, this is Pastor Rick. We are waiting, right? Two days after election, we're still waiting. What is this? This is like incredible, right? You're like, who's going to be the president? What's going to happen? What do you think, Pastor Rick? What does the Bible say? Well, I've got a verse for you. Isaiah 40. This is it, people. This is so cool. Listen to what it says. Isaiah 40, verse 28. He says, um, let me start again, verse 27. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth, young people will grow tired and weary and young men will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. NIV version, Isaiah 40. Good goodness, man, that is an incredible verse. Starting at verse 27. Why do you complain, O Jacob? Why do you complain? We're all complaining right now. Who's winning? What's up? And everybody on both sides of the camp are like screaming toward heaven. You know, I saw the other night some Christians were some, well, I assume they were, they were kneeling down praying, you know, for the people, you know, count the vote, count the vote, you know. <laughs> I say, man, we're all over the map. And then the other people are praying, no, God, don't let them win. I bind the spirit of, you know, no, no, no Trump. That's what they're praying. <laughs> Some people are saying, yes, Trump, no Trump. How about yes, Jesus? How about let's not make this personal? Look, you can vote your heart. You can have your conviction. But how about let's fall in love with each other again? You know, the greatest danger in this day is we stop loving each other. We stop caring for each other. We stop talking to each other. We stop being engaged with each other. And we've lost our way. And so here's what I believe is true. We're getting weary, all of us. And we're getting a little bit fatigued, all of us. And we are in need of help, all of us. So how about this? Today, we trust God. We wait. We see where it falls. Thank God for the opportunity to vote. Everybody's vote has a value. Everybody's opinion has a value. You need to pause and say, well, you know, 60 some million people voted for him and 70 some million voted for the other guy. You know, OK, well, everybody's opinion has some value. Maybe it's time to rethink your position and say, OK, how can we work together? Kind of like a marriage, right? You know, you you think this, they think that. Now you're at each other. I don't know why in your family and in my family. How about our family? How about coming together and building a new family? Maybe we need don't need two parties. Maybe we need just OK. I'm not going to say that. Maybe. <laughs> everybody needs to be in one party. Kind of like everybody needs to be in one church. Everybody needs to come here and me preach, right? Right? Oh boy, we're special. I think we're on the comedy show in heaven. I think heaven looks at us and says, look at them people. They just think they know everything. All of them. You know, all of them just know everything about God. They know everything about everything. They got a little Bible, you know, and they hold it in the Bible up and say, I know what the Bible say. I'm voting the Bible. It's the Bible. And, uh, you don't know everything even though you know the Bible, even though you know God, even though you know you're saved and you're spiritual and you're close to God and he only talks to you. But maybe, maybe, maybe God so loved the world. You know, the people who aren't really that he gave his only begotten son. People that don't think like you, people who are different. Maybe it's time to open our hearts to everybody. Okay, Temple, so what do we do? Pray. That's what we do. We pray. So <laughs> let's do that. If we can't see eye to eye on everything, let's at least do that together. Father, help us. You said if we wait on you, you give us strength. And so, God, today we wait upon you, trusting you to give us strength, power, and grace. Let us rise above these divisions. Let us rise above these moments of tension. Give us grace. We pray for whoever the next president will be. We pray, God, for favor. We pray for the protection of this nation. We pray, God, that you would help us all be servant leaders, servant and more, more committed to each other and not divided. A house divided cannot stand. We've got to find a way to unite. And that means we've got to give value to the opinions and views of others. That's what this country is based on and should have been based on. It messed up in a lot of cases. It didn't do all it promised. But I believe, God, that you can help us get to where we need to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I love you. Thank you for watching me on Sharpen. I want to encourage you to stay encouraged. Don't let these days discourage you. You stay sharp. Let's stay tuned. I'll be back with you tomorrow.
updating you. Woo boy, I got stuff to talk about this weekend. You want to make sure you stay with us. Woo, a lot to talk about. Bye-bye, stay sharp. See you next time. My name is Pastor Rick. Bye-bye.